This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In this video, we're going to be exploring five useful generator functions that will help you understand how generators actually work. Starting with the first example, which is just going to be a simple Fibonacci generator. Now, first of all, I'm going to import from typing the generator type. Then I'm going to create a function called Fibonacci generator. And that's going to return a generator. And a lot of people usually get scared when it comes to typing generators because there's actually three types we have to insert here. The first one is going to be the type that we're going to yield. The second is what can be sent to the generator, which in this example will be none. We don't want to send anything here. And the third type is what we return from the generator, which will also be none because we are generating an infinite series of Fibonacci. And throughout the five examples, we're going to get much more comfortable with what this means. So in this example, we're using none for these two, but in the other examples, I will fill this with a value so you can see exactly what it does or what it looks like. Anyway, inside the generator, first we want to create A and B and assign those the value of zero and one to get started with Fibonacci. And while true, we're going to yield A. And the only thing that makes this a generator is the yield keyword. Once you use yield and you yield a value, it turns into a generator. And all yield means to keep it simple is return this value. And at the bottom, we need to perform that Fibonacci operation, which is AB is going to equal BA plus B. And to make this visually easier to understand, you can also put this in parentheses. Anyway, next let's create our main entry point. And since I have a shortcut in PyCharm, it's going to insert all of this for me. But here I just have a main function that returns none because we only want to execute this in the if name is equal to main check. And inside here, I'll type in fibgen for Fibonacci generator. And that's going to be the generator of this type. And that's going to equal a Fibonacci generator. Below that, I'm going to create a number, which will be of type integer, and I'll show you what that does in just a moment, and a line break, which will be of type string, and that's going to equal this dash times 20. Below that, we can type in while true, and I'm going to take some input without capturing it. This is just to pause the program until we tap on enter. So here I'm going to insert the F string that says tap enter for the next n numbers of Fibonacci. So that's how many numbers we're going to generate in chunks. And for i in range n, we can print the next item in the Fibonacci generator. So to grab something from a generator, we need to use next. And at the bottom, just to make things look nice, I'm going to print the line break. Now with all of this, we can tap on run. And to get the next 10 numbers of the Fibonacci sequence, we just have to tap on enter. And it's going to generate this list of Fibonacci numbers. But before we continue that, I wanted to put a line break right there. So that the next time we run this, we get 10 numbers generated in a nice format. And at the bottom, we can choose to generate 10 more and it will do that and again and again and again. And we can do this indefinitely. But what's really nice is that we're generating these on the spot, which means we are not storing any of these values. Otherwise, if you were just to create a regular function and you were to generate the next 100 numbers in the Fibonacci sequence, you're going to have to create a big list for that. So this can be considered much more memory efficient because we're only generating that value upon request. For the second example, we're going to be creating a line reader. And to do that, I'm going to import system. And from typing, I'm going to import generator once again. Then we'll create this generator function called read that takes a path of type string. And it will return a generator that outputs a string or yields a string allows you to send nothing to it, and that returns a string. And inside, we'll type in with open the path in read mode as file, for line in file, yield line dot strip. 
and this should actually be as, which will work much better there. I mean, the arrow wouldn't actually work at all there. But once we run out of items or lines in this file, we're going to return this is the end. And that's going to be the return value for the generator. So now we actually specified that we're going to return something here. And below that, we're going to create our if name is equal to main check and create our reader, which is going to be this generator of type string, none and string. And that's going to equal read note.txt, which is a file I created off camera. And we're just going to pretend that it has billions of lines. And obviously we don't want to load all of those lines into our program. We just want to get them in chunks or one line at a time. So first of all, we're going to type in input and I'm going to type in press enter just to prompt the user to actually press enter each time they want to get a new line. And while true, we're going to try to print the next reader. So we're getting the value from the reader. And at a certain point, we're probably going to run out of lines. And if we do, we're going to have to accept a stop iteration error or just stop iteration as E. E is going to capture the value that we return from the generator in case you want to use that. So if we print that the stop iteration has occurred, we will also be able to print E dot value, which is the value we returned from our generator. And we need to call system.exit because we want to end our program here. Then outside of this, we're going to try to capture the input so that the user continues to press enter each time they want a new line. But now let's see what happens when we run this program. So let's tap on run. And the first line is going to prompt us to tap on enter, which gives us the text of every city needs a Bob. And the next time we tap on enter, we'll get a new line back but not every Bob needs a city. Every Bob needs a castle, but not every castle needs a queen. Unless Bob is inside the castle, then Bob needs a queen. So as you can see, we're generating these lines one at a time, which is quite nice because as I mentioned earlier, if you have a file that has billions of lines of text, you're not going to want to load all of those immediately. And when we tap on enter one more time, there's actually nothing left in that file. So it's going to hit a stop iteration and it's going to give us back the value that we specified in our generator. I mean, this note.txt actually only contains six lines. It's just for demonstration purposes. Moving on to generator number three. And here we're going to be using a generator to calculate the cumulative sum. And I'm only doing this to show you how to send a value to a generator. So as always, we're going to import from typing the generator type. Then we can create a function called cumulative sum. And I know a lot of programs love to call this cum sum, but I'm too immature for that. So I'm going to call it cumulative sum. And that's going to return to us a generator, which is going to yield a float. And it's going to allow us to send a float to it and it's going to return nothing. And that's going to be the generator type. Then we're going to create a total of type float, which will originally be set to zero. And while true, we're going to receive a new value. So new value of type float is going to be equal to yield total. And then total plus equals new value. And I'm going to explain this loop in just a moment because it took me quite a while myself to understand what it actually did, but it's quite straightforward when it's explained correctly. Anyway, next we're going to create our if name is equal to main check and try to start this cumulative generator. So here I'm going to type in cumulative generator, which is going to be a generator of type float, float and none. And that's going to equal the cumulative sum. And before you can actually send a value to a generator, you're going to have to start it. And to start it, you need to call next on it. So this will be the first go at the generator. But below that, we can type in while true, and we can create a value of type float, which is going to equal the float of the input of enter a value. And obviously in a real project, wrap this in try and accept because the user can enter literally anything and if they enter something that cannot be casted to a float, it's going to raise an exception. But I'm ignoring all of that. I'm pretending that the user is incredibly intelligent and always enters the right thing. Then we can grab the current sum, 
which will be of type float. And that's going to take the cumulative generator dot send value. So here we're actually sending the value and it's returning a value or it's yielding a value back. And each time we loop, we're going to print the cumulative sum, which is going to be the current sum. But now let's run this so I can explain what's happening. First, it's going to ask us to enter a value so we can enter 10, then we can enter 20 and let's add 30. So as you can see, each time we enter a value, it calculates the cumulative sum, which is the sum until that point. And going back to the cumulative sum function or the generator, it's now time I actually explain how this works because we start by yielding the total, which in theory should return zero, but we started that generator before we did anything, which means now it's waiting for a value. And as soon as you send a value to a generator, it inserts it here. So instead of yielding the value, it actually retrieves the value and moves on. So now we have 10 here because that's what we inserted here. And this gets passed into new value, which gets added to the total. And obviously at the end of a while loop, it moves on to the first line again, and then it yields the total that we defined here. So we're actually using yield twice now, because once you send the value, yield turns into retrieve, and then it does the loop and yields the total back. So you can look at this as being called twice, which means the next time we send a value of 20, it retrieves 20, adds it to the total, and then sends the new total. And you don't need to create a new value here. You can actually just yield the total down here and it will work exactly the same way. It's going to grab that value. It's going to add it to the total. It's going to loop and then it's going to send that value back. And I can show you that because we're going to rerun this. So now if we did one, the cumulative sum is going to start at one, two, three. It's going to be one plus two plus three, which is six plus 20, which is going to end up being 26. But the main point to take from this is that when you are sending a value, yield is going to act as retrieve. I mean, there's no retrieve keyword in Python, but that's one way to look at it. You retrieve the value, you use it, and then it loops until the next yield statement where it returns that value or yields that value. Up next, we have generator number four. And by this point, you should be getting quite comfortable with how generators work. But still, I'm going to give you a couple more examples. So from typing, we're going to import generator and the any type. Then we're going to create an infinite in, I actually don't know how I spelled that, in infinite repeater, which is going to take a sequence which will be a list of type any. And obviously you can be much more restrictive with this. You could actually use the sequence type to do this, but I'm just going to keep it simple and use a list of type any, which means we can have a list of any kind of object. And that's going to return a generator of any, none, and none. There's no point in returning a return value because this generator is never going to end. And potentially you could send something to this generator, but we're not going to do that here. But what we will do is create a while true loop and type in for item in sequence, yield the item. So it's going to do this indefinitely, but obviously it's only going to do it with one item at a time, because if you were to generate a list that repeated billions of times, I don't know if my computer would even be able to handle that. But down below, we'll create our if name is equal to main check and create a repeater, which will be of type generator of any none none. And that will equal the infinite repeater with the following sequence, one, two, three, and four. And to show you how it works, we're just going to print for underscore in range 10, print the next element in the repeater. So that's going to grab 10 values from our repeater, one at a time. And what we should get back is one, two, three, four being repeated 10 times. Or I mean, you know what I mean? It's repeating the list indefinitely. So even if we were to call this 100 times, it would repeat that on and on and on. Whenever the list would end, it would start again from the first element in that list. And finally, for our last example, we're going to be creating a CSV row reader. And to do that, we're going to import CSV, import system, and from typing, 
we're going to import generator. Next, we can create our generator function and it's going to be called CSV row reader, which will take a file path of type string and will return to us a generator of list of type string. We will not allow anything to be sent to it and we're not going to return anything. Then with open file path in read mode as CSV file, we're going to perform the following operation. For row in CSV file or CSV dot reader with the CSV file inserted, yield the row. Then as always, we can create our if name is equal to main check and get started with using this. And first of all, we're going to create the reader, which is going to be of type generator of list to string, none, none. And that's going to equal our generator with the file path, which I actually should insert here because I don't have that. And it's going to contain this important information. But once again, pretend this is heavily populated with billions of items. Loading six isn't really a problem, but if you have more than that, it can eventually lead to poor performance in your program. But with that into place, we can type in while true. And for i in range three, we will print next in the reader. And outside of the reader, I want to create some input that says continue retrieving rows, question mark. So we ask the user if they want to continue loading this information in chunks, essentially. Otherwise, or I mean, not otherwise, but once we run out of elements in our list, okay, it turns out I didn't use a try block at all. And I, that's what I meant to do. So try indent except. So once we run out of information or data from our CSV file, we're going to encounter the stop iteration, obviously. So we want to handle that by printing no more rows. And I didn't return a value in our CSV row reader. Once again, you can, and all you have to do is specify it as the third type in this type annotation to make the type annotation work. But in this case, I don't really care. So I'm just going to type in system.exit to make sure we don't get stuck in this infinite loop. Otherwise, it would print no more rows indefinitely. But just like that, we can run the file once again. And first, it's going to retrieve the first three elements. And if we want to continue reading or retrieving the rows, we just tap on enter and it's going to give us three more on the spot. It's going to generate them on the spot and we can try one more time. But since I have nothing left, it's going to give us back the message of no, of no more rows. So yeah, that was the final example of the day. I hope this gave you a better understanding on how generators work. If you think there's anything I forgot to mention regarding generators, please do leave that in the comment section down below so that other people can learn. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.